particular part of the country. Question number 10, the Honourable Michael Woodhouse. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, my question is to the Minister of Health. Does he stand by all his statements, policies and actions? The Honourable Mr. Dr David Speaker, Mr Speaker, yes, in the context they were made and taken. Why did he not inform the New Zealand public that Defence Force medical personnel were being deployed to New Zealand hospitals on July 12th under Section 9 of the Defence Act? Speaker, the public have been informed. Mr Speaker. My question was why did he not inform the New Zealand public? Uh, I, I, I heard it and, and uh, because we have had a, had a look at this, um, the Minister could have replied because it's not his responsibility uh, and I, I think he has answered the question. Speaker. Uh, there is a difference between the responsibility to inform this House under ministerial statement from the moral responsibility to inform the New Zealand public of what's going on in its health service. Well, if the member wants to continue down that line, he can ask further supplementaries. Does he not believe it appropriate, as Minister of Health, for him to have informed the New Zealand public of what arrangements were in place on July 12th in our hospitals, including the deployment of New Zealand Defence Force medical personnel? Uh, Mr Speaker, my key priority in the lead-up to the nurses' strike was making sure that safe staffing was in place, and indeed it was. And I want to thank the personnel from the Defence Forces who assisted with that. I want to thank the New Zealand Nurses Organisation and I want to thank the DHBs who all worked constructively together to ensure that there were safe staffing arrangements in place around the country. I take my hat off to them. What were the circumstances that led to the Government to conclude that the NZNO alone could not provide all life-preserving services as required by the Employment Relations Act? Okay. Um, I contacted the Minister of Defence in advance uh, to ensure that there was a contingency in place. Uh, the nurses' organisation, the DHBs, worked together to make sure that there were, all the rosters were filled for safe staffing requirements, and that was done. Speaker. My question was not about the process that followed after the conclusion uh, that the NZNO couldn't provide those services. It was what were the circumstances to lead to that process being necessary in the first place? Ask the question again. What were the circumstances that led the government to conclude that the NZNO alone could not provide all life-preserving services as required by the Employment Relations Act? Mr Speaker, the um, NZNO worked constructively with the DHBs and uh, obviously with Defence Force personnel to make sure all of the rosters were filled. They clearly had uh, some rosters that they didn't believe were going to be filled when they requested the additional assistance, and all of them were. So safe staffing was the priority. That was achieved. Does he accept that when NZNO representatives have reiterated that a revised offer would require more money to be ratified, uh, his continued statements that there is no more money is inflammatory and unhelpful? The speaker, no. Question number 11, Chris Bishop. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Speaker, to the Minister for Police. Is he satisfied police?